summer holidays for city children in North Kensington. Like every holiday, the schoolyards are locked and the youth clubs are shut. We was playing ball outside a lady's doorstep and she came out and told us to go somewhere else, so that's why we came here. Everywhere we go, it's always trouble, because in the streets, it's always a car coming around and lots of get knocked over. Cities care little for children. In this drab corner of London, which throngs with kids, there's hardly anywhere for them to go that's not prohibited. Children need somewhere for adventures. It's an urgent need and it must be answered. So people in this neighborhood are now demanding that the council provide more space for play. Not just a bit of concrete with swings and roundabouts on it, but something better. Space does exist, but admission to these gardens is by key only. A privilege enjoyed by well-to-do tenants of the surrounding flats. A legacy of the Victorian builders. North Kensington is the victim of long years of neglect by the Borough Council. Landlords too have sucked it to the bone. Citizens' action groups are everywhere, but most people are cynical and distrustful of politics and have no wish to be involved. But changes must come about, and they're starting with the children. There's now a play programme run on temporary sites by volunteers in holiday time, and it's growing. The oldest, and until recently the only permanent play site, is the Notting Hill Adventure Playground. Kids from all over flock to the playground. They call it the venture. The venture celebrates the arrival of summer with a carnival and invites its neighbors in. Like any adventure playground, the activities go on all year. But with so many kids in the summer, a lot of things will need special planning. There's also the need to get away altogether. So there'll be weekend camps out in the country. Some children don't expect a holiday away, like Denise. If my mum wouldn't have been gone one day, we might, we might go on holiday to Cheddar. But if my mum don't win, we come up here. I'm doing some swimming and come to the adventure and build some camps. Have swimming with him, stand adventure, play football. Uh, I put more towers. Make the playground bigger. Make yeah, bigger. but take that stupid but slow way. We ain't got enough room in here. Indeed, there's very little room. The kids are often harshly critical of what the venture provides, but still they come, the regulars almost daily for years. It's a place available to the whole community and provides an evening club for old people and one for teenagers too. Because it's always open, people tend to treat it as a handy information bureau. They come in with every sort of problem and expect a solution. There's a full-time paid staff of six, led by a play leader. Their main job is to help the kids, working with them at their level, doing what they want to do. What's the matter? Look! What? What are you doing? They're listening to you. No, he's listening to you. No. Polly had a dolly who was sick, sick, sick. So she found for the doctor to come quick, quick, quick. The doctor came with his bag and he had, and he knocked on the door with a rack of clap, clap. He looked at the dolly and he shook his head. He said, 
part of the venture is set aside for under fives. This playgroup is run by Save the Children Fund. It provides the first step towards getting to know each other. Learning by playing. The problem is whether to cooperate or compete. Through lack of space at home, some have never had the chance to make things with their fingers or even play at all. Some parents don't see the need for the messy materials children like, but prefer to buy them expensive, sophisticated toys. They often object if a child wants to bring home something he's made, because there's no room to keep it. The playgroup provides a valuable contact with the mothers who come to collect their children. As a result, some become more interested in what their kids are doing. In imagination, children relive situations and find out things for themselves. They discover ways of working together. Building a hut, hammering a nail, to a child that's creative. In the venture, any achievement is better than none at all. But for the kids who come here, is the venture any more than just a temporary compensation for what they lack outside? What about Barbara? Or Denise and her sister Jean? Lukey in the vest and his brother Louis. Local families all face one problem, bad housing. Children here, though very independent, often lack the chance to develop basic skills and their education suffers. Through inadequate housing, Barbara's family has been forced to split up. She has a brother and a sister, Peter and Annie. I live with my grandmother. Peter sleeps with my dad. And me and Annie sleep with my grandmother. I sleep in the corner and Annie sleeps out in the middle and my mum sleeps at the end. Is that funny at night, the three of you in one bed? It's a big bed. I do get woken up sometimes by the rats. Where do they come from? From underneath the wardrobe or underneath the bed to find some cheese. When we put it in the cupboard, they can open the door. You never, you liar! Children can be deprived in other ways too by parents who have to work long hours and don't have much time to spend with them. Denise and Jean leave home each morning and play together while their mother's out at work. This is Denise. I'm eight next week. My sister Jean, she's older than me, she's nine. And I'm eight, I'm bigger than her. She's downstairs to me on my shoulder. Home for Denise and Jean is a mile away down Portobello Road. They make the journey alone. The council had the power to stop this becoming a slum if they'd wanted to. But laissez-faire politics means letting things find their own level. The area has a notorious history of bad landlords and very few families have any confidence in the future. Denise and Jean live here in a rented flat. The house is collapsing. The housing trust, whose property it is, sent the builders round to test the rate of collapse. Denise knows the facts. What's your house like? My house like? It's all falling to bits. And the um, stairs are. There's passage stairs near where there's only three flights. And you can't... You can't walk towards me putting your whole feet down except the floor. You can only tiptoe on that. But what floor are you on? Flat floor. That's the dangerous one. Because there's a hole in the roof. That was there when we moved in. When it rains, it all comes in. When it, when it thunders, it comes in as well. The message is plain, but people have become fatalistic. Their children, given the chance, may be different. Children provide radical solutions to their problems and they don't understand grown-up mentality that is so conservative. 
That's the possibility an explosion. Sir. Yeah, I know. The kids tend to be wary of adults, often with good reason. So at first, there's a good deal of hostility to overcome. There's plenty of aggro, often deliberately provoked. But at the same time, the conditions are there for real friendship to develop. Kids get to know the staff sometimes better than they know their own parents. So if someone has to leave, it's a matter of genuine concern. Because I wish they never go like Julia, she's gone. Julia! And Donald's away. And I don't like that. And no, I like Julia. Julia. Julia's gone, gone away to Greece. Yeah. But she's coming back the end of September and she might be coming to see us. It's like making friends. When they make friends, you've been playing with them every day. No, for the week. When, when they go away, you feel so lonely and sad. And to me, my friends go away. Yeah. What's he doing? He's, I, I know, I know, don't I? Shop, now you go. That's where I work. Which shop do you work in? What do you do there? What are you doing? You're helping them. Put the boxes out. Oh, you pack up all this to help them pack stuff and take it down again. The challenge for the leader is that conversation is a two-way thing. Kids can ask him questions and find out about him as well as talking themselves. This is a man. His name is John. He's a bank manager. He's ugly, but he's rich. He's got big ears. And he's got too much hair. And he's just waiting for his friend. As he's waiting, he was getting himself drunk. And um, his friend is a girl. Some kids in the venture have plenty of talent and can easily initiate their own projects. Others get quickly bored playing on their own and yet are inhibited from working in groups. They don't like the competition from other children. But group work is part of the venture. Kids learn that more can be achieved by working together than by sabotaging each other's efforts. There's more progress that way. Projects are started that sometimes last over several days. said, how about having a, a hole in the middle so that we can have a rope like the tower we had before? Yeah, and it can come down and we can have mattresses at the bottom, it can slide down the rope. All we need now is the pharaohs to put it up. When you're working in groups, you know, you start arguing who's going to do this, who's going to do that. But sometimes when you work on your own, you know, you get things done quicker. We couldn't very well do, do all this by yourself. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> I could, but it took me about four years. If you work on your own, you start getting bored unless you've got, you've got patience. OK, pull it a bit more. The atmosphere in the venture has to be free and easy. Bit more. There's only one explicit rule. Enjoy yourself and let others do the same. What happens when people break that rule? You have to be doing something really bad to get told of here. What, yeah. what happens if you do get told of? Has anybody ever been put out? Yeah. 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 In a way, he's saying that they uh, ain't controlling the deal. You have to do something very bad, he said. Well, he's yeah. kind of well, giving well, them yeah. a bad name. I love smashing bottles. I think that's the best thing. Yeah. Better than chucking stones, smashing windows and stick. But I like smashing bottles. We're not allowed to smash bottles, are you? Do you think everybody behaves themselves well in this venture? No. No. Of course I don't. Why? What did you do? Well, I spit. If anybody's chucked out more than three times, that they can't come back no more. That should be the rule. I've been chucked out more than three times. But I come back in there any time I like, because yeah. my legs... Because it's my, my legs, body, my, my, my brain, and so I go in where I like it's free country, and no one stop me, so... Most kids do have a strong sense of justice. They need to know that if they are put out, they can come back after a few minutes. Put a child who is difficult back out on the street is no solution. 
But given the chance, the children will solve their own problems in the end. Now, Dad, if anyone hits me, I must hit them back whether they fight, can fight me or not. What, even if they're bigger than you? Yeah. I don't care if you hit me, but I'll still hit you back. When it's really summer day and you're having a fight here, well, they don't let you fight up here. They, they give you boxing gloves and let you go up um, in there, remember? Not, not in a real fight. A real fight, they stop it. punching in the jaw and they both had to go in hospital, Lukey. That was on the news. Yeah, it's going to be um, Joe Frazier. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Adventure playgrounds are not just for slums. They appeal to all sorts of children from all backgrounds, town and country, because they offer that commodity most attractive to children, danger. But danger that can be enjoyed in safety. There are very few accidents in this playground. Lukey and his brother, Lewis, have learned a lot. Children of great potential and inventiveness, they have gained a great deal of self-confidence in their abilities. But in the society they're growing up in, the truth is, they may never get the chance to exploit them. Living just round the corner from the venture, Lewis and Lukey treat it as a second home. Their mother leaves their dinner out while she's at work, and at six they come home for tea. Their mother earns the family income, but her wages only just about feed them. If she needs to buy anything else, it means overtime. Her standard of living has deteriorated in this country, but she hopes her children will have some sort of a future. Her attitude to the problems of the area is fatalistic. She has no idea how to solve them. She says it's up to the government. It's not her job to be involved. But if things are really going to be changed, parents are going to have to be involved. Children need space of their own to grow up in. There's none here. Perhaps it matters less while they're young, but what happens as they grow older? Amazingly, play is still low on the list of priorities for development. We need more playgrounds, built by the children themselves. To the adult eye, it's a heap of junk, untidy and ugly. When the area is redeveloped, some would like to see it replaced with a slab of concrete. But to a child, the venture is a way of hitting back at the world outside. What are the future for these children? Many are destined for a life in the factories, where their spirits will be crushed. They deserve better. Some now in their teens who have grown up from the playground are disillusioned by what they've found outside and have walked out of the factories that we've sent them to work in. Through frustration, some have left their homes too and have taken to living on the streets. Our society is full of wasted talent because we don't know how to use it. Young people have it, the venture encourages it, but in the end, there's little outlet for it. Playgrounds in themselves cannot alter this, but the children who go there may one day begin to force the change. <laughs> 